this kitchen is not terrible. It's a good size with newer vinyl flooring, lots of nice cabinetry, and quality wood furniture. But have you ever seen a more boring kitchen? Everything in the room is white, beige, or brown. Even the silver hardware and light fixtures blend in. If you saw my thrifty living room makeover, you're already familiar with this rental house where my son Spencer and his girlfriend Madison live. Their landlord is very obliging, permitting us to make several changes. But of course, we aren't allowed to paint the cabinets. So let's see if we can infuse this bland space with color and personality in a rental-friendly way and on a budget of only $300. I'll give you a breakdown of my expenses later in the video. But enough talking. Let's get started. Madison's father provided the first update by changing out the chrome faucet for a black one, which was a huge improvement in both function and aesthetics. Madison loves it, and it only cost $50 on Amazon. Here's their cat, Rocco, presenting the new faucet. Madison loves dark green, and she chose these peel-and-stick tiles from Kamami. They are good quality and much less expensive than other similar brands. As I planned the tile layout, Madison removed the old phone line and outlet covers and wiped down the walls. I lined up the first tile under the outermost cabinet and used a plastic wallpaper scraper to firmly press the tile to the wall, using the edge of the scraper along the faux mortar lines. Since I didn't have to cut around anything, the first two tiles went on really quickly and easily. However, for the third tile, I did need to use a utility knife to cut around an outlet. The tiles are fairly thick and stiff, and you can't really bend to shape them around obstructions. So I needed to make a pattern to cut a tile to go around the window seal. Madison suggested I use the paper backing off of the tiles, which was a brilliant idea because it was the exact same size and shape as the tile. I made creases in the paper, cut out the pattern, traced that shape onto the tile, and cut it out using a pair of scissors. For a real statement, we decided to apply the tile all the way around the window. Luckily, the decorative cornice on the blinds popped off, so I was able to take the tile above the window. The next day, I brought my caulk gun with me so that I could caulk along the bottom and top edges of the tile and around the window. This just cleans up the edges and makes the tile look a little more authentic. Madison disliked the cabinet knobs, and I had to agree. The silver hardware just blended in with the light wood-colored cabinets. To match the new faucet, I replaced the knobs with black ones that had once been on my kitchen cabinets, and I spray painted the handles with a couple coats of black spray paint and a top clear coat to help protect against chips and scratches. I like how the black hardware creates contrast with the light wood cabinets, and I think they actually make the wood appear richer. Okay, let's take a snack break. If you're a snacker like me, then you need to know about Nuts.com. Nuts.com is my one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, and hard-to-find specialty sweets. They have a huge selection, over 3,000 items, and their quality is top-notch. They actually roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, and your satisfaction is guaranteed. I always order a variety of snacks each month. 
this month I ordered everyone's favorite nuts. My husband loves the cashews. Uh, my boys love the almonds. I love the mixed nuts. And for a little something sweet, these bourbon pecans are so good. Like really, really good. Addictive. So good. I'm also loving all their Easter themed snacks. I think I'm going to order the No Bunny Like You gift box. Right now is a great time to check out all the delicious snacks at nuts.com because new customers who use my link, nuts.com slash Canterbury, will receive a free gift plus free shipping on orders of $29 or more. We were permitted to install peel and stick wallpaper. Madison chose three different wallpaper patterns she liked, and then I narrowed it down to this floral pattern from Home Depot. I thought this pattern would go well with the green tiles and also her green living room decor, while introducing some additional colors. I've installed peel and stick wallpaper in two recent bedroom makeovers, so I'll link those videos if you want to see all my best tips and tricks for hanging wallpaper quickly and easily. However, I will repeat that you must spray the wall or the back of the paper with Easy Hang. It allows you time to adjust and readjust the paper and it allows you to remove all of the air bubbles. I use a plastic wallpaper scraper it removes the air bubbles and assures the paper is firmly adhered to the wall. Although I measured the wall and ordered the wallpaper accordingly, I ran a little short and didn't have a full piece that matched the pattern above the doorway. And you know I'm not going to order an entire roll of wallpaper to cover a 12 inch space. So I cut out some individual leaves and berries from leftover scraps and added them to make the mismatched pattern less noticeable. The wallpaper added a lot of color and interest, but there was still a lot of beige and brown on the other side of the room. So I decided to use some peel and stick wallpaper that I had left over from the grandfather clock makeover. To avoid wrinkles, I applied the paper in three separate pieces, covering the center section first and then covering the two sides. I would have used the Easy Hang spray here too, but unfortunately I had already taken it home. But because I was applying small pieces, it went on easily. I still had quite a bit of wallpaper left. So I decided to apply it to the back of the cabinets in the peninsula. This is kind of unexpected, so what do you think? Do you like the pattern paper in this spot? Both Spencer and Madison disliked the ceiling light fixtures. The chandelier was not in the center of the eating area, and the pendant lights were oddly placed and not over the peninsula. Both lights were silver and modern in design, and like me, they both prefer traditional decor. Madison's father came to the rescue again and replaced the pendant light with an inexpensive ceiling fixture from Amazon. For Over the Table, I thrifted a more traditional chandelier for $10 and spray painted it black. Then Madison's father installed it with a long chain so that we could swag it to hang over the center of the table. Both of the kitchen windows have blinds, but I wanted to add curtains to the large window to add additional color and texture to the space. To save money, I used curtain brackets and an old curtain rod that I already had. When attaching curtain brackets, I always drill small holes first to see if I hit wood or not. And if I don't, then I drill a slightly larger hole 
and insert plastic anchors. There was no place for a finial on one end of the curtain rod, so I hammered a small scrap of wood into the pole and then drilled a hole in the center. I painted some old finials with a couple coats of black spray paint, and the light sage curtains are an inexpensive set from Amazon. The light flooring is basically the same color as the cabinets, so to add color and texture to the floor, I put down an old rug of mine. It's originally from Target, but I actually purchased it at Goodwill. The room really needs a larger rug, so I'll be keeping an eye out for a good deal on a bigger rug. The dining chairs and bar stools were in good condition. They just needed a little freshening up. I removed the seats and cleaned the wood with Restore a Finish and Super Fine Steel Wool. For the two bar stools, I picked up a yard of upholstery fabric on clearance for $9 and cut two pieces to recover the seats. When reupholstering cushions, make sure you have one or two inches of fabric that folds over to the bottom side. Staple the fabric in the center of each side, pulling the fabric taut. Then check to see how it looks. This is especially important if you're trying to center a pattern. Then add more staples along the sides. Trim off some of the extra fabric in the corners. When stapling the corners, pull the fabric and create small pleats, stapling each pleat as you go while trying to keep the fabric smooth on the edge and top side. Once the fabric is completely stapled down, trim off any extra fabric and reattach the seats. Spencer requested velvet seat cushions. So I also purchased two yards of some blue velvety fabric and recovered the four kitchen chairs. And I had enough fabric left to cover one small pillow with the floral fabric and a slightly larger pillow with the blue velvety fabric. If you live somewhere where you aren't even allowed to put up peel and stick backsplash or wallpaper, you can still inject color and pattern with your wall decor. Madison had a large mirror that she wanted me to hang somewhere in the kitchen. I chose to hang it above the sofa table over the wallpaper to create a strong focal point in the room. I was leaning towards a gallery wall above the bench, but Madison wanted to keep it simple. She had two large floral prints that she preferred in this spot. For my loyal viewers, I don't think I need to mention that all the decor in the room was thrifted, including this wreath and vintage coat rack. Also, this vintage metal plate with an embossed fruit design that I hung behind the stove. When I bought the chandelier at the Habitat Restore, I also thrifted two large boxes full of home decor for only $30. Some of those items included a large metal vase, metal leaf decor, and a wood lantern that I styled on the sofa table. And I couldn't believe my luck at finding a black paper towel and utensil holder. In addition to the Habitat Restore items, I also thrifted a few things at Goodwill, including a piece of floral art and a wood shelf and drawer that I placed next to the sink. I completed a few small DIY projects to add some special touches to the kitchen. I hot glued some tassel trim to the bottom of a blue kitchen towel to hang on the oven door. I also glued gold tassel trim along the bottom of a lampshade that came on a small thrifted lamp. Be sure to use a good quality glue stick like Gorilla Glue on projects like these. And of course, I printed out some vintage bird images to add to two thrifted wood frames that I hung on the backsplash. I also thrifted a wooden serving tray with an inset ceramic tile. 
and the tile was pretty ugly. So to cover it up, I took a screenshot of Madison's wallpaper on the Home Depot website. Then I opened the Print to Size app. Press the plus sign to open your photo roll. Click on the photo you want. Use the arrows to crop away the parts of the photo you don't want and to resize it. Use the corner arrows to increase or decrease the picture size without changing the height to width ratio. Once you have the exact size you need, press print. I printed the wallpaper image on regular copy paper and decoupaged it over the existing tile. Once the Mod Podge is dry, apply several top coats of Mod Podge to create a durable surface. So how much do you think this makeover cost? I spent exactly $50 at Goodwill and the Habitat ReStore. If I tally up everything, the total is $347. However, the faucet was installed a few months ago by Madison's dad, so my expenses were $297. So let's see how we did with $300. Well, what do you think? I hope you'll let me know. And if you enjoy budget kitchen makeovers like this, here's another video I think you'll like.